Now she don't know nothing. Listen, what she knows, you don't know. <clears throat> you can think you know everything, but you don't. That's why God gave you a help me. If you didn't need no help, he wouldn't give you no help. <laughs> there are insights that you cannot see. I learned this, man. That's why there are some situations where I, 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 I'll say this over the pulpit, and I know this kind of sounds kind of funny. I said, when you call, you need to call my wife. She'll answer the phone. And I say that facetiously, but I really mean it because there are some issues that people are dealing with that she, it needs the sensitivity of my wife. Because the way I'm going to respond many times is not the best way to respond. I understand my weakness in this area, and I understand her strength. And the Lord gave it to me for that purpose so that we can build the kingdom of God and build up people's lives. And people need me and they need her. Amen. Can I be emotional? Yes, I can be emotional at the right times. But do I need to walk around being emotional? No, I need to be firm. I need to be stern. I need to be able to stand against the onslaught of the devil. To yield to one's admonition, advice, or urge, or advice. This is telling us that we should be willing to take one another's advice. That's what verse 21 starts out. It says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. That means we do it because we respect God. We do it because God says so. We do it understanding that God would not have ordained this if he didn't have some purpose in it. We disrespect God when we're trying to just do things our way and not God's way. Right. And so there's no fear of God. The whole word fear of God means reverence and respect. Yes. Mm -hmm. We need to respect the word of God. We need to understand what is God really trying to say in his word. Mm -hmm. Tells the man that leave his mother and father cleave to his wife. I mean, you can't be a mama's boy. Come on now. You can be a mama's boy initially, but once you get married, the mama's boy stuff is done. Mm -hmm. So oh, he's just a mama's boy. Not when he's married. Mm -hmm. That's over with. But you know, we have a society that tries to embrace things that's against the Word of God. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to believe the Word and obey the Word and respect God enough Amen. to know that He knows more than we know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And He knows what down the line is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And He knows what He needs you to be mm -hmm. to be able to weather the storms of life. Storms of life come to everybody. Saved, unsaved, married, single. The storms of life are coming. Amen. And the storms of life in a marriage are different than the storms of life of a single person. Mm -hmm. And you got to have the tools. You have to have the laces to keep that marriage tight. Because when the storms come, you're going to need it. Amen. Verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto of the Lord. This expressive phrase points to the closeness and exclusiveness. And the the specialty of the relationship. Submit yourself to your own wives, your own husbands. You know, you sometimes you have marriages where the, the wife is arguing with the husband and they come to church to be nice to everybody else. That don't work. Come on now. You you can't submit to other men. Being nice to everybody else, and then you're not submitting to your husband. You're re 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 rejecting him and, 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 and pushing back against him and not allowing him to be the head. And then you want to come and let everybody else tell you what to do. Forget that stuff. That's not biblical. Right. There has to be a special relationship between the husband and wife that no one else has. There are things that I do in front of my wife that I don't do in front of nobody else. I ain't going to be acting the way I act in front of her around everybody. Y'all fun. Y'all think I'm crazy at that point. There's a wrong with that guy. But there are things about me that only she knows. There's things about her that only I know. And that's how it's supposed to be. There is a specialness. Submitting to your own husband. A closeness. It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. So before you marry somebody, you should spend some time getting to know them. Amen. So you can start developing a closeness. People get people online. Yeah, hey, I love them. You don't even know them. You haven't spent any time to get to know them. There's nothing special. You don't even know if that's the right picture. <laughs> and many times it's not. Sometimes it's a picture from 1985. <laughs> you're all at the restaurant looking for them, they're standing in front of you. Oh, <laughs> but after the reality comes and you get to know them, 
<laughs> you start developing what's called a relationship. Mm -hmm. Relationships must be built before you jump into a marriage. People just meet each other. I want to marry you. You don't even know me. Mm -hmm. Want to get married? No, I want to get married. <laughs> you can't be quick. Mm -hmm. We have to take time. Because you got to know who you're submitting yourself to. Because you have, you have a responsibility once you get married to submit to that man, to submit to his leadership. If he wants to move to Texas, you, you have to move. I'm moving. You must you misunderstand a marriage. You, if I want to move to Alaska, you make your, you know, argument, give your advice. But ultimately, the man has the last say so. If he decides we're moving to Alaska, off to Alaska you go. Pack your stuff. And gone. <laughs> what happens in marriages is, is that everyone's trying to be the boss. Everyone can be the boss. The submitting is under is allowed by each party, but ultimately, in the end, there's only one head. This scripture of wives submitting yourself to your husband finds its origin in the institution of marriage. The head of the woman is the man. That's what 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 says. Its foundation is found in the nature. Man was formed first and then the woman. That's why he's the head, because God made him first. And society has done everything it can to change all aspects of creation. The Bible tells us that man is to honor the woman as the weaker vessel. It's clearly talking about basic differences between the structure of man and woman. Even though a man is superior in those aspects, he is consistent in his inferiority to the woman in gentleness, patience, sympathy, love, delicacy, of sentiment. She is delicate in the way she handles situations. Mm -hmm. People call and say someone died, I turn them over to my wife. Because I, I am developing the, the ability to be more sensitive. But she has an instinct to deal with the sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And be sympathetic and you can clearly see the difference even when I'm trying to be sympathetic it's not as genuine mm -hmm. as it comes from my wife or any woman's heart mm -hmm. people say they die I say well how old were they it was 95 well okay it was old <laughs> like, no, I shouldn't have called you yeah. <laughs> yeah you probably shouldn't have sorry <laughs> actually I've said that I had to really the Lord had to really help me. I was like, Lord, I'm saying all the wrong stuff to people. Because I don't, I don't feel the same way people feel about death. People are born and people die. That's just how I feel. And it's because I'm, that's my character. And, and as a man, I, I'm, I'm not as sympathetic as I should be. And I've worked on it. I'm like, oh, they died. I, I try to do it. It just doesn't even feel right. <laughs> um, geez, I, I just, I, I'm just a baby. So-and-so's mom died someday, and she gets on there, and it's a whole different scenario. Mm -hmm. She be crying, she be praying, and yeah, I pray much in the background. <laughs> Sympathetic, mm -hmm. patient. Yes. I'll throw in the towel in a minute on the person. I mean, I'll get fed up with you quick. Mm -hmm. After a minute, I'll be like, listen, stop it. Stop it or get out. Oh, let's give them one more time. They already have one more time, one more time, one more time. How many more one more time until they get? Mm -hmm. Just one more time. I'm like, baby, you need, to, you need to kick them out of your life. She says, I know, but, you know, I just need to show love. I'm like, okay. That's probably why I don't have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like two. Really think about men don't have a bunch of friends. They have about two, maybe four. Two to four. Women have fifteen or twenty, <laughs> and then you have the ones that they think they're your friend, but you're not really their friend. That's like another whole category. <laughs> another third. <Yes. laughs> because there is a difference. There is a strength in the love of a woman. That's why the Bible clearly says, husbands, love your wives. 
Wives, submit. You don't have to tell the wives to love your husbands. Because in, wives intuitively have a love that's on the inside. And men have to work on it. Our society is doing an injustice to our young boys by trying to feminize them. Emotions, no way. <laughs> Writing books. Or, oh, emotions, when I was young and my dad was hard on me. Yeah, he needed to be hard on you. You're standing up in the pulpit writing books, selling millions of copies to young men, feminizing them. Jesus. And we wonder why we have the problem we have in society today. Hmm. Where men aren't able to be men. Hmm. And stand firm and do the job that they're called to do as men. Hmm. There is a responsibility that God has given men. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. These are some of the characteristics of a husband. He is to protect her and provide for her. When you feminize a man, you make him unable to be the provider. Because intuitively, a woman wants a man to take care of her. But we have a society of men running around wanting a woman to take care of them. Because they have not been raised in a family where the structure is proper and it's very difficult for a woman to place in the heart of a man what it means to be a man. Right. And so then you have a man that doesn't know what it means to be a man. He has a baby and he doesn't know how to teach that child. Listen, you have a responsibility to provide and protect the woman. We have kids sitting around at home playing video games and don't go to work because they think that's okay. And we have parents, we have women that think that's okay. Oh, little Johnny wants to sit around. No, get up and go get a job. <laughs> 13, you should be throwing the paper. 14, you should be working at Taco Bell. 20, you should be working somewhere else or going to college. Because intuitively, you have to protect and to provide. But when you feminize men, you pull away the structure that's inside of their soul. And our society is destroying men. People in the church think it's all right. And I'm going to say this and make some people mad. Uh -oh. I hate men wearing pink. Pink was a defeminizing color to make men feel less than a man and try to identify, oh, it's okay for me to wear pink as a woman. And then try to get mad at me. Hey, pink is just a color. No, it isn't. When you have babies, you paint the child's room pink if it's a girl, and you paint the child's room if it's blue. Blue if it's a boy. It's a standard that has been set in society because there's a great divide between what a man is and what a woman is. And the enemy's trying to blur the lines. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got grown men on a foot, big, grown, powerful football man. I said this before. Doing the commercials, crying and stuff. Oh, I hit my wife. And I just don't know what to do about it. And, you know, I just don't know. Shut up. Stop hitting her. That's what you do. You don't know what to do about it. What kind of foolishness is that? It's the enemy destroying what God is building up. God is, wants to reunite the family and he wants men to recognize what their role is as a husband is to protect the wife. You cannot go to bed and leave all the doors unlocked. <laughs> because you're not really concerned about whether somebody's going to come in and break in and hurt the family. You have to have, to have a mindset of protection. It is your responsibility to make sure she gets home at night. She's out at 9 o'clock at night. You don't call to check and see where she is? Because you don't have a mindset to understand your responsibility as a man is to protect her. Amen. Standing back and let people say stuff to your wife and you don't step up? What are you, what are you doing? Lord. Your job is to protect the wife, not put the wife down. Look at this. Verse 29. For a man... Ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes even as his own, even as the Lord the church. The word cherish means to provide with food and other things that are needed to live. It means to care for and be responsible for. The scripture tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 18, if any provide not for his own and especially for his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. We have a society. That says, because my wife makes more money, I don't need to work. It's a life from the pit of hell, no matter who makes more money. Your job is to have a spirit of providing for the family. Whether you make a little or not, she helps you good. If she doesn't, it's your responsibility. 
I know a couple where they had that scenario, and when the wife decided she wanted to work, the husband got mad. He got mad because he was used to not working. And she was making six figures. And all he did was ride around and spend money. And then when she finally got off that job and said, well, I don't want to go back to work, he was so furious. He was trying to coerce her and pressure her and go back to work because he didn't want to take up the responsibility. It's hard being responsible for a family. If you only make $10 an hour, then you need to do what it takes. You need to retool yourself. You need to re-educate yourself. You need to do whatever. But your job is not to sit back and say, well, I don't know what we're going to do. What do you think, honey? And then let her run out and try to figure out and carry it alone. It's the man's responsibility to carry it alone. And we're not imparting this in our kids. And that's why so many young men in their 20s, 21, 22, 23, 19 years old, all live with girlfriends. None of them have their own place. Don't have their own car. Don't have any credit. Come on. And it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. I can't find a job because you're not looking hard enough. You're not even trying to find a job. Lord have mercy. <laughs> the man has a very heavy duty responsibility to nourish, to nurture. To nourish means to, to care for and be responsible for. If the lights get cut off, it's your fault. Look at this in the last paragraph. Nourish also means to cause to develop and to grow stronger. It is the husband's responsibility. This is going, this is going to get somebody. To encourage your wife to be strong. I hear this real good. Husbands, sometimes they have the wrong idea. They put their wife down in front of folks. Don't ever, ever, listen to me, husbands. Don't never put your wife down in front of nobody. Your responsibility is to encourage them, not destroy them. Don't ever say a negative word out of your mouth in front of anybody towards your wife yes, or about her ever. Yes, sir. It is against the will of God. Your job is to encourage her to grow stronger. Mm -hmm. Not tell her she can't do it. Oh, you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? You don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Come on. Tell the truth. When you say things like that, you don't know what you're doing. You're destroying your wife. You're destroying your marriage. And then you go off and forget about it. And women don't never forget. Yeah. <laughs> Remember September 24, 1995? No, not really. <laughs> At 2 o'clock? No, just don't tell me because you know I don't remember. <laughs> when you said... When you said... <laughs> <laughs> Responsibility is to help them to grow stronger and to encourage them in life. Don't ever be like, I don't know what we're going to do. What do you mean you don't know what you're going to do? You better figure out what you're going to do. Yes, if you don't know, it's going to be all right, honey. God's going to work it out. It's your job to walk in faith. Yes, sir. Women are emotional. Yes, when the light bill, the lights do get cut off, of course they're going to say something. And you, well, why are you getting all mad? What do you think why she's getting all mad? <laughs> she's getting mad because you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You're allowing me to be affected. My life is in your hands. I'm submitting my life to you, and I'm expecting you to lead me in the right direction, and you're acting like you don't know what you're doing. You need to go to God as the man. Amen. Christ is the head of the man as the man is the head of the wife. Mm -hmm. She comes to you for advice. What do you think we should do, honey? Where should we go? Your job is to say, let me check yeah. God, what should we do? Yeah. Jesus, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. You got to help a brother. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the Lord be like, okay, this is what you do. And then you go back and say, this is what we're going to do. And she said, well, I don't want to do that. I know, but this is what the Lord said we're going to do. Amen. Oh. Amen. Mm. So, so important. Mm. There's nothing wrong with saying, well, what do you think, honey? Well, I think such and such a thing. Okay, Lord, what do you think about this? Lord says, that's the word from God. Do what she says. Baby, I think what you're saying is the right thing for us to do. Amen. Nothing wrong with her giving advice. She's to help me. She sees things you don't see. Right, sir. But ultimately, you have the responsibility. Not her. 
Then when things go wrong, well, you the one told me to do it. No. <laughs> Still your fault. You have to be sure what you're hearing from God. Right. And not just taking someone's advice without asking God. In all your ways acknowledge him, he shall direct your path. Yes, sir. Ooh. Yes, sir. We hear complaints all the time. She doesn't support me from husbands. She just don't support what I'm doing. Yeah, but do you support her? It's a real issue. Are you building her up? And then complain that she's not supporting your efforts and your vision and all this kind of stuff? Are you putting her down constantly? Do you try to run to somebody else and, well, this person supports me. No, they don't. They don't even know you. Oh, man. When, they, when you get finished put, tearing them down, they ain't going to support you either. <laughs> we don't want to have superficial lives. Amen. Turn the page to cherish. For every man have ever hath yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes. The word cherish means to adore. It means to treasure. Mm -hmm. To think the world of. To admire. To hold in high regard. Amen. To exalt. To praise. <clears throat> that is the role of the husband is to praise the wife. Tell her how beautiful she is. Tell her how I want. I don't want to just lie. You better do something. <laughs> 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 Find something you like. Amen. Praise her and exalt her. Otherwise, don't marry her. Amen. If there's nothing there that you can praise and exalt, that's not your wife. Amen. Women, don't, don't ever get with a man if he can't praise you and exalt you. That ain't your husband. Amen. Just because you got a nice car and got some money, what's that? Man, you'll be in a you'll be in a hell of a place. Amen. Your place will be like just grievous. You must make sure that this man really appreciates you and adores you. You can tell if a person adores you the way they look at you. Husband shouldn't be grimming the wife. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me, I'm telling you the truth. I'm at the door greeting people. The lady says something to us, and the husband was like, Wait till we get home. Jesus. I said, Oh Lord, have mercy. Husband shouldn't be grimming their wife, being out, you know, uh, all mean and, and uh, with a face, like you're going to do something. What are you going to do? Say, that made me mad. Mm -hmm. I don't even know you like that. Because I understand the role of a man is to respect a woman. Amen. And to honor and adore her. Mm. And to exalt her and to praise her in front of people. Amen. Honey, I love the way you walk. Woo! Glory. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You better find something. That's a beautiful nose. You got a cute little nose. <laughs> To my wife, I love your head. It's round. It's not a brown head. I like your head. It's perfectly round. I wish I had a head like that. I got like a peanut head. She's like, no. I'm like, no, I really love that head. It's like, ooh, you can wear braids and just look, man, you'd be looking stellar. <laughs> man, you gotta learn how to praise and exalt and extort and elevate. Don't get with no man that puts you down on the first encounter. Well, You're dating them, they're telling, well, I don't like that, that dress you got on. Then you need to go on somewhere. <laughs> Talking about you don't like the dress I got on. You already will start off on the wrong foot. <laughs> I don't like the way you chew. The last time I'll be talking to you. <laughs> you know, your phone number is zip, delete. <laughs> but women don't do that because they don't have a criteria. They don't understand what a real man looks like. And so they, they date men all the time that, you know, they pay for the lunch and dinner all the time. He you know, lost his wallet, lost his checking account, don't have no Visa card, or somebody stole it. Everybody stole everything from you. Where's your card? Oh, I lost my keys. <laughs> Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to make it plain. I don't care if men are mad at me or not. Be mad. Amen. Men need to be men. It takes you to be angry at what I'm saying so you can 
direct yourself, then go ahead and be mad. As men, we can't be manipulated by anger. Amen. We can't be manipulated by emotion because we're not emotional. That's a woman's role. She can, you know, sometimes you can manipulate her with emotion. But men, listen, you can be emotional and this is a decision. I don't have time for emotion when it's time to be what God's called me to be as a man. But I'm to cherish you. I'm to adore you. I'm to love you. His love is single. Exclusive, undivided. A husband is to devote to his wife all the affections of his life. You can't love your car hobby more than you love your wife. Amen. You can't love the football game more than you love your wife. All oh, the games are okay. She's trying to get your attention. The game will come back again next year. <laughs> and all these things are so much more important than our wives. Wife is the most important thing. Right calls you in the meeting, you don't answer the phone because you're in the meeting. The meeting ain't more important than your wife. You run in the meeting. So hold up, my wife is calling me. I talk to millionaires and I put them on hold all the time. My wife calls, everything stops. Because she's number one. She's not number two, number three, or some other number up down the road. The man has to understand what it means to cherish. When something's very, is a treasure to you, and they, you, you want to make sure everything's all right with it. Somebody breaking something break into your house. You're not going to look to see if your shoes is all right. You're going to see if your diamonds are still there. Amen. Come on down. Well, I want to see if they stole my shoes. No, I want to see if they stole my Gucci. <laughs> they stole my diamond bracelet. My diamond earring. Something that's a real treasure. When it comes to your wife, she's a treasure. If she's calling, I'm answering because I want to know what's going on, baby. You're my treasure. I know sometimes we don't look at it like this. Uh, we just like two people living in the house like we're roommates and stuff. If you wanted to be a roommate, don't get married. Just find your roommate. Marriage is different. We're going to run over just a little bit. The Bible tells us in Proverbs, husbands rejoice in the wife of your youth. That means you're to enjoy her. If you get married, there should be a joy to be together. While you can. Don't wait till you're 90 and decide, oh, I think I should love my wife. No. While you're able to do things. While you're young. While you're able to go on vacation. While you're able to play together. While you're able to sing together. Even if you can't sing, sing anyway. I sing all kinds of songs to my wife. I just make up songs. If she make a cake and I think it's flat, I'll sing about the flat cake. <laughs> oh, what a flat cake we have today. What a flat cake we have today. It's tasty on the inside. And I just make up a song. You got to sing. We got to enjoy one another. Enjoy your wife. That's the husband's job. Sit around just looking at the paper, always busy, never taking the time. You have to. I'm talking about tightening up the laces, y'all. Amen. First Peter chapter three, verse seven. Last, last verse. You gotta read this. First Peter chapter three, verse seven. Likewise, you husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife as into the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Uh, that wasn't the scripture I was looking for. Colossians chapter 3 is the one I want. Because I only have time for one. Colossians chapter 3 verse 19. Is everybody there? Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Don't be angry. Don't have indignation. Don't be all hurt and stuff. You have to suck it up. Things are said that hurt your feelings, don't get all mad and walk out the room and don't talk to you for two days. That's not acceptable. God doesn't accept it. Scripture says, be not angry, that's a command. It's something you cannot do. You have to be able to go back in there and say, I'm sorry to be, I love you, whatever it takes. The scripture reinforces the fact that we can't afford to be emotional. If you have an emotional woman and an emotional man, you have a bad relationship. 
Because then you'll be acting all mad, they acting all mad, and you just, I ain't saying nothing to you, you ain't saying nothing to me, ain't saying nothing to you. That ain't your job. Your job is to be, love is stronger than anything. Oh, baby, I love you. Even if you're mad at me, I'm still going to love on you. And even if you will, don't hug me right now. Okay, we want, we want to eat. I'm not going to be all bitter towards you because you're trying to act emotional. I'm not going to get on the emotional bandwagon. That's not what the Lord called me to do as a man. Hear me, men. Yes, sir. You have the responsibility to lead the family in every area, emotionally, financially, with insight and understanding. Yes, sir. And love will break down that thing and it will strengthen her. Hello, somebody. Yes, Hallelujah. The kind of love that God wants us to show will make it unnecessary for a husband to ever command her husband, her wife, his wife to do anything. He will never have to say, you didn't wash the dishes, you didn't wash the clothes, because she'll want to please him because she understands her role to submit herself to her husband. Love your wife, tenderness, Kindness is the hallmark of a good marriage. The marriage does not start with the woman. The marriage starts with the man. And as a woman, if you're looking for a husband, you need to know what to look for. If he's walking through the door and slamming the door on you, you need to turn around and go get back in the car and say, come on, take me home. If he doesn't have the sense to have just the basic etiquettes of kindness, of opening the door for you, there's a problem with that. He has not been taught anything as a child. And you're going to end up trying to raise him as a child, being his wife. And he's still going to be acting like a kid. We need to have more classes where men understand their role as men. Amen. Especially young men that are coming up so they can understand what, how to be, so they can be what God's calling them to be for a woman. He that finds a wife finds a good thing. It's not, a, it's not the wife. He that finds a husband finds a good thing. That's the opposite. The, wife, the husband has to be able to search out, find a woman, and then pour the love on her like never before. Get her to fall in love with him, and then he can marry her. That's how it works. Amen. And there's a whole other role for women. I'm not going to go into it because we're out of time. My wife talked a lot about the woman who role last year. I know sometimes they say, well, what's the man supposed to do? Well, don't worry about what the man's supposed to do. What are you supposed to do? Amen. Sometimes in relationships, we're so worried about what the other person is supposed to do. We're not even doing our part. Amen. There's two parts to the whole. And if everybody does their part, it makes for a great marriage. Let's give a little hand praise for us. We're at this moment.